も素敵な人ほど女神の思いを分かってくれないのはなぜかな<笑>今回の転生ではまだ恋愛してないのよねこういうことってやっぱりよく考えたからじゃないとねなあまったくどの時空でもどの時間軸でもあの陰湿なカオスとボーゼルがいるなんてもううんざり Hey everyone, this is Nitro. In this video, as promised, I will talk about the way to build Young Jessica. So, Young Jessica is very, very much the young girl version of Jessica, and I actually couldn't help but notice while going over her details that, for whatever reason, her in her adult form, or the MILF form, as people are fond of calling her, somehow she has a smaller waist. As well as wider hips than her young form. So maybe she does a lot of exercising when she gets older? I don't know. In any case, though,、um, so in this form, in young Jessica form, she is very much both mentally and in actions much more like a teenage girl.、Uh, if you do, you know, just from her quotes that you hear, as well as from.、Uh, Her time rift missions, you get that feeling. So, with all that said though, in terms of combat power and why you should build her, for PvE content, the main use of her would be that she has the ability to launch skill attacks at 5 or 6 range, which is very, very useful. For the 5 range, it would be her single target strike skills, whereas for 6 range, that would be AoEs. So, the reason her skill range gets so increased is because she has the Divine Bestowment Transformation skill. This skill, the main effect of it, is that your mobility gets reduced by 3, but when you're using skills, your unit range is also increased by 3. Thus, these two range skills, the single target strike ones, become s five range, and then AoE attack skills, which usually have a three range, become six AoE attack range. So, the five attack range can be very, very useful in certain fights, especially the ones where the enemies are capped at five attack range, or sorry, at four attack range or less. In particular,、yeah. if you're slowly grinding up your ice dragon, in particular, this is where young Jessica can especially shine. Because the ice dragon, if I just quickly go into the fight, Actually, only has four range. In other words, if you have your young Jessica set up on one of these two tiles here and activate her divine bestowment, her five range attack can attack the ice dragon every turn and not take any kind of counter attack. So, you know, for example, you can bring young Jessica here, you can maybe bring another range attacker, right? And then. You might not even need the other range attacker in truth, but if you have two of them, you know, one of them can completely attack outside of the Ice Dragon's range, making this fight much, much easier. Unfortunately, for bosses who have five range, for example, I think the Eternal Temple Phoenix boss is a perfect example. There are bosses with five range, you can't do anything about those ones.、Um, but nonetheless, I. Young Jessica can be incredibly useful due to that extreme range. I suspect there may be challenges in the future where her 5 range can be very, very powerful as well. Hasn't come up yet, but we will see. As for PvP, for the Chinese server, in PvP, Prime Jessica was very, very powerful in the Season 2 playoffs. In Season 3, She has apparently been mostly replaced by Deedlit of the Record of Lodos Wars because, in the case of Deedlit, she can act again and therefore does not need to set up with Divine Bestowment, unlike、uh, young Jessica. However, with that said, the Record of Lodos War banner may, it's very possible that it may be delayed just like we've been getting delays with Yu Yu Hakusho. So, there's no guarantee that we're going to get、um, the Record of Lodos Wars banner on time, you know, to be able to grind those characters up properly for Season 3. So, that's just a warning.、Um, you know, 
At the end of the day, whether you build Young Jessica up or not is ultimately up to you, but she is very much a DPS character, like a siege tank type character. In fact, in her Young Jessica form, she doesn't have the teleport skill at all. So, you know, if I take a quick glance at all her skills here, you see you don't see any teleportation skill whatsoever. All right. So, with all that said, let's start by covering her talent. Right? Her talent is Avatar of the Goddess. The damage incre damage increases as you get further from your target. And you know, uh, this percentage increases for uh for every star level that young Jessica is at. I think it goes from something like 2, 4, 6, and 8. So because she can potentially attack 5 tiles away from the enemy, 5 times 8 would be a 40% damage increase for her when she's using attack skills, which is absolutely insane. Right? In addition, if you stand in place this turn after taking action, you gain one mobility for one turn, right? So, in addition to that, that one mobility part increases to two mobility for six stars. What this means is even though she is in her Divine Bestowment state with minus three mobility, she can get plus one or plus two mobility inherently, allowing her to move even in the Divine Bestowment state. The mobility is definitely reduced, right? It goes from 3 mobility down to 1 or 2, but she can still move. So because of this mobility increase being 2 mobility increase at 6 stars, that's why if you really want to use Young Jessica, you really should have her at 6 stars, right? Otherwise, she has it's going to be very rough if you have to keep the, you know, keep disabling the Divine Bestowment and reactivating it. Because Divine Bestowment, when you use it, it will end her turn. So she can't attack that turn, right? Of course, when the skill is already active and you activate it again, there is the effect of removing Divine Bestowment and allowing you to act again. So there are those elements to her. So in other words, when she activates the Divine Bestowment state, her turn instantly ends. When she disables it, then she can act again. So a lot of quirks to this uh, mechanic. And that's why I did mention that it is kind of like, she is kind of like the Langrissa mobile version of a StarCraft siege tank, right? When she goes into the siege mode, it ends her turn and she can attack at very long ranges. When she deactivates it, she can start moving around again. Okay, so with that covered, let's talk about the classes she has and the skills. In general, she has two ending classes, the Martyr class and the Wizard class. As always, Wizard classes have more intelligence than these Holy classes. The Holy class tends to have a bit more hit points and I think more magic defense. Overall, your final class should generally be considered the Wizard class unless you desperately need a Holy character to do damage to demon units in PvE. Right? But for PvP, basically everyone will have her in the Wizard class for increased intelligence. If you're going to use Young Jessica, you actually want to do the full runestone commitment. You want to get every single class she has access to, including the branch off bishop class. The reason for the bishop class is because it gives the mass heal skill. So with the mass heal skill, with two single target strike skills, which is cleanse from the saint class and her starting fireball skill, right? With two AoE attack skills. One is from the Murder class, the Breath of the Goddess, right? A three AoE four span skill. And the other one is the Meteor attack. All of, she has a very wide variety of skills, right? Finally, she has support skills, which are the, ma the Strengthen skill, the Mass Seal skill, and also Mass Resist. So basically all of these combination of skills makes young Jessica very very versatile in her utility. She can single target strike at 5 range, she can AoE attack at 6 range, she can be a he you know another healer in your party, she can provide strengthen if she needs to, she can mass resist if she needs to. So she's almost like a flexible character that if you pick 
depending on your party and depending on what you, your opponents you're facing, you can change up her skills at will. You know, AoE attack, she's good. Single target strike, she's good. You know, providing healing, she's good. So, and that would be the reason why you would put her in your party, really. All right. So, with all these things mentioned, let's now talk about her factions. So, she's part of three different factions: Legion of Glory, right, Organs of Light, and the Mythical Realm. In term plus with three factions, it can be fairly easy, I think, to get her a faction buff. Generally speaking, for your PvP party, you're going to have Juggler as one of your tanks. Right? If you Juggler can provide a faction buff as a result. Of course, the drawback of Juggler providing a faction buff is generally speaking, you have to give up on one of her one of his critical skills, right? Triton, Great Dragon Barrier, and then B Shock. So that can be a disadvantage, but you know, if you end up with multiple Origins characters, like Juggler, Luna, Tiaris, and Young Jessica, it can work out fine. Legion of Glory faction buff will usually come from Elwyn, right? And then finally, to have a third faction buffer, you would generally seriously consider bringing Gizaroth, right? So you may have to consider playing a Mythical Realm team as well. But those would be the three faction buffers you would likely bring with Young Jessica. And Mythical Realm in truth has a lot of characters that are very PvP oriented. You know, Yulia, Young Jessica, Juggler, Zerida, Bozel, Bernhard. You know, that's six characters right there that are generally used in PvP. You know, Lambda if you have built her up. So it's not a bad thing to get, put Gizroth into your party if you have an endgame PvP party, of course. Alright, so with that covered, let's move on to talk about the required characters to unlock Young Jessica spawns. And they're surprisingly easy. I think I've already unlocked them, so I can't actually demonstrate it in my case. But the two characters who unlock her bonds is for the fourth bond, it is MILF Jessica, the older version of Jessica to do her fourth mission, and to unlock her strength bond, you're going to need Liana. Yeah. So fourth mission, master in her prime, fifth mission, procrastination. Use those two characters, you're good to go. So for bond unlocking, young Jessica is quite easy. I should also mention, young Jessica herself actually unlocks Emilia's bonds. So if you want to use Amelia, you're going to need a copy of Young Jessica. Alright, so with all that mentioned, skill combo wise, I had already mentioned, you generally want to bring Divine Bestowment, right, for the extra range increase. In terms of skills, it's completely flexible. Bring what skills you need depending on the fight. So I'm not going to give you a... There is really no uh, ideal skill combo for Young Jessica. Very commonly though, you generally see, let's say, Divine Bestowment, Mass Heal, and then one of the other skills. Maybe Cleanse, maybe Fireball, maybe an AoE attack skill. You know, sometimes you'll replace the Mass Heal because you have enough healing and you bring another attack skill with her. Those would be the most common skill combos. So, let's move on then to talk about her soldiers. right? Hero boost wise, um, her third boost provides the following. Now, that's the one I do not have unlocked yet, so I'm going to quickly bring that up. Her third bond provides attack and magic defense, right? You unlock it by clearing the time rift elite mode 3 1 using her. So she has very, very, she's very, very attack oriented as a result, right? If I jump back into her character screen now, she should have 35% attack increase, right? Yeah, 35% attack increase, 30% magic defense increase, 15% defense, 20% hit points, right? It gives her enough ability to one-shot targets in general, 35%, right? In terms of her best soldiers, generally speaking, it would be considered the sorceresses if you use single target strike deal, because single target strikes the sorceresses get an additional 45% attack, and as long as their hit points is at 100%, this gives them the most attack value possible. Right? 
interesting to note is that she does also have access to those wizard soldiers. They have less attack increase. It's at 30% rather than 45, but they're not limited in the sense that they don't need to be at full hit points. Okay. When would this matter? When your enemies can do fixed damage to you before the battle. For example, if they have Betty in their party, you would not want such soldiers. No. Just an interesting note. I don't think I've seen anyone actually use Betty in PvP yet, but it's something to keep in mind. Or alternatively, if you know they have gear that can do fixed damage to you before combat begins, that's also worth considering. Right? Um, there is now a piece of equipment that can do that, and that's why I mentioned that. Let me quickly bring that up. Um, the summoning screen, gallery, equipment, and under armors. It's not a piece of gear I have at this time. Um, but it does exist. Oh, there it is. Cloak of Defiance, right? When being forced into battle from a ranged attack, deal fixed damage to the enemy, 0.5 times hero's defense. So if you know the enemies have Cloak of Defiance, which can break your sorceress's uh, damage increase, you might want to bring wizards as a result. That is a PvP element. So, continuing on then. So those would be her two best soldiers if you use single target strikes. However, if you know you're going to be using an AoE attack, Jessica, in that case, you probably want to bring Forest Priest instead. Because the Forest Priest, right, it increases the hero's healing effects by a certain percentage. And when hero uses skills on friendly units, like Mass Seal, you also have a 30% chance to dispel a debuff. So it's a very, very useful soldier for when you're using a support version of young Jessica. So she has three soldiers that you generally choose to use. She does also have access to the Dark Elf Snipers, you know, 45% attack increase, kind of like the Sorceresses. Difference here is the enemy has to be at 100% hit points. Generally speaking though, you don't want to mix um, physical attack soldiers with magic damage. So I generally say stick with the sorceresses. But they are usable if you have Dark Elf Snipers at level 10 as well. I just thought I should mention that as well. Finally, as for catapults, catapults increase a unit's normal attack range, right? By one. However, they don't increase the skill range. All right, so here is a demonstration of young Jessica in battle, right? Remember, we, I mentioned that Divine Bestowment increases her attack range. So let's count the tiles. One, two, three, four, five, right? I'm going to have her activate Divine Bestowment six tiles away from the enemy with catapults on her. So let's do that. And... So now she has three attack range, you see here. I'm going to have Liana act again, my young Jessica. And if I use her single target strike skill, Cleanse here, you can see the range remains five. So even, once again, even though she has catapults, her range, her range is increased to three. The skill range remains two. Thus, even with the plus three range, I can only attack this tile. So I can't actually reach the enemy here. So that's something to keep in mind. While catapults offer very limited, uh, they have very limited utility for young Jessica. For the second demonstration, I'm going to show how young Jessica can have multiple mobility buffs stacked on her. The interesting thing about young Jessica is that her talent, where if you stand in place for one turn after taking action, you gain plus one mobility for one turn, can actually stack with other mobility buffs. So I'm just gonna have her end her turn like this, right? And take a look. I just had young Jessica activate her breeze, which was the enchant on her equipment, and she has plus one mobility from her talent and plus two mobility from breeze. So just like that, she has plus three mobility giving her 6 mobility uh, at this time. In addition, if 
I have Leticia sprint her if I have sorry if I have Leticia end her turn her love support which is also a different talent can also provide plus one mobility to young Jessica so I'm just gonna do that and we can see then my young Jessica for one turn actually has seven mobility and two attack range right so that's a pretty extreme mobility for a range attack especially a mage of all things right? keep in mind as well if my young Jessica was actually six stars her talent mobility increase would actually be two that means she actually has eight mobility potentially which is absolutely insane and then if this mobility buff was actually from let's say a tenuous headdress plus three mobility she can actually have nine mobility wow so that's the first example so now i'm just gonna go back to my turn and what i want to demonstrate here now is even though in her divine goddess state she loses mobility right she can actually still move uh due to all these mobility buffs she can get she loses three mobility so this technically goes to zero but with other mobility buffs she can continue to move anyways so let's have her activate divine bestowments right so if i now sprint her it's Leticia. Go back to her. Let's take a look. So here, because she activated her divine bestowment, right? Divine bestowment is considered moving. It's could you do not it does not count as standing in place. Okay? So that's why her talent did not activate here. Important to know, right? So she was she would technically be at zero mobility. But because I activated Leticia's sprint and love support, she has two mobility this turn. So what that means is in other words, if you were going to have Jessica activate her divine bestowment, you want to move up as far as possible. Because whether you move or you don't move, her talent's mobility buff will not activate on that on this particular turn. So you generally want to move up for that. And then, you know, if you can give her a mobility buff, whether via sprint or tenuous headdress, by all means do so. So that she can move a bit more the following turn. Right? And then that way, you have a character who, for one turn, can move relatively far. So for this turn, for example, I might move up in attack. And in the following turn, if divine, if her talent activates and so on, I can move further, right? So for example, let's have young Jessica. Oh, my young Jessica does no damage. I was hoping I could one-shot this guy and then maybe uh, move some more the following turn. Didn't quite happen there though. But one last thing I want to demonstrate just now was that when I attacked, I did not get the talent mobility buff either, right? You have to stand in place without attacking for this mobility buff to apply. So let me just go back before I attack. If I don't attack anyone with young Jessica here, then she gets the avatar of the goddess for the extra mobility. So you, it's, these are the, I guess, the mechanics of the way it works. The only way you can get extra mobility from her talent is if she ends turn on the same spot and does not attack anyone or use a transformation skill. And for the final demonstration, I wanted to clarify the way Divine Pope Stoneman's uh, stance shift works. Okay. So, for this demonstration, I'm going to bring young Jessica and Liana and just get started right away. So, what I'm going to do here is I'm going to have young Jessica, right from the start, activate her divine bestowment. Right, 
so she's now in her goddess state. I'm going to use Act Again on young Jessica now. And then, funny note, she got plus 3 mobility here. So, I'm now going to have her launch her AoE attack, Breath of the Goddess, six, at these cannons. Okay? So, she's launched the AoE attack. The cooldown on this skill is 5 turns. In other words, Divine Bestowment, only when you activate it does, re does it reduce the cooldown of skills by 3. Right? Once it's activated and you use a skill, that skill's cooldown is not reduced by 3. So it's important to note that. In other words, what this means is with young Jessica, she cannot consistently toss out skills in general because in the case of AoE attacks, both her AoEs have a 5 turn cooldown, right? Um, the Breath of the Goddess, 5 turn cooldown. The Meteor skill, 5 turn cooldown. And in terms of single target strike skills, right, she has the Fireball, which has a 1 turn cooldown, but her other single target strike skill is Cleanse, which actually has a 2 turn cooldown. So, you know, for example, she can Fireball, then Cleanse, then Fireball, but then she won't be able to attack with any kind of skill that following turn. So that's something to keep in mind and it's important to note. She has no real consistent single target strike skills. Unlike other mages, like let's say Rene or uh, Lana, who can actually bring, let's say, you know, free strike and lightning strike or something to endlessly toss up single targets. Yeah. All right. So, with all those examples covered, you know, of the soldiers, of the, uh, of her skills, the way they work, let's now move on to talk about her equipment. Equipment-wise, it's pretty interesting. Uh, because you don't know whether your young Jessica will use single target or AoE attacks, I think, in general, her best general purpose gear would be the Red Moon or the Blue Moon. Red Moons provide extra hit points, Blue Moon provides magic defense. You know. They are very similar in performance, but Red Moon slightly edges out Blue Moon, just slightly. In terms of armor, the best one of course is the Tenyo's Robe because it gives 10% hit point boost and can dispel a buff from the enemy while inflicting a random buff on them. If you don't have a Tenyo's Robe, you know, secondary options would include the Baldur's White Robe, you know, it doesn't offer any survivability increase, but you get the chance to do full damage to the enemy in melee combat. You can use a Galaxy Cloak because it gives 5% hit points at least, as well as match defense increase. And you can also use as a, I guess, the worst choice option, the Death's Robe. You can see I have a whole ton of Galaxy Cloaks built up, a Death's Robe, and even three more Tenyo's Robes here, right? So Tenyo's Robes, Death Robe and Galaxy Cloaks because I have so many healers and mages. So, in terms of helmet, the helmet selection is where it gets interesting because young Jessica has so much range, right? She can attack at 5 range. The, the ordinary choices of Odin, Odin's Battle Helm and Sharon may not actually be the best because she may not actually move within 3 range of the enemies. So that's something to keep in mind. Um, they can work for her, but if you're using them, you have to keep in mind that you have to move within 3 blocks of the enemies. And that generally does once again mean that you have to have your young Jessica at 6 stars so she gets plus 2 mobility from her talent. Other than these ones though, some other choices include buffing effects. So the Yadrasil Reef, as well as the Tenyo's Headdress, right? Because in that sense, if you plan to consistently attack at 5 or 6 range from the enemies, you can always be next to your tank to provide Yadrasil Reef, or you can have Tenyo's Robe to buff someone within 2 blocks of you with the buff. 
So those are other options other than the Odin's Battle Helm and Charon effects. And of course, if you don't have any of those, you can always use, let's say, a Dark Crown, once again, for magic defense increase and hit point increase. You know, if you're going down to SR items, well, maybe the Sage's Hat in replacing the Yersil Reef. Maybe, unlikely, but maybe the Warlock's Hood if you decide to place Young Jessica within 3 range of the enemy to reduce their magic defense, so a follow-up attack can hit harder. Generally speaking, I feel like Warlock's Hood should be on other characters because Young Jessica should be your damage dealer, right? So someone else applies the Warlock's Hood debuff, reducing the enemy magic defense by 30%, then Young Jessica can hit harder. Right, that's my personal thought. Alright. And then the final piece of gear is the accessory. And the accessory slot is kind of interesting. For PvP, flat out, as usual, it's Holy Ring, right? Immunity to silence is just so important. Even though Young Jessica has extreme range to attack the enemies, you're generally pretty likely to be in your tank's guard range, right? And if you're in your tank's guard range, the enemy's AoE attacks would also hit Young Jessica, right? Whether it's Earthquake, whether it's Blood Dance, you know, the AoE attack will probably hit Young Jessica if she's in the tank's guard range. Plus, that immunity to silence will still be clutch. You can always run without it though, right? If you choose not to run the Holy Ring, you know, you can just run really any other int increasing accessory, right? Because as long as they increase her int, she will hit very, very hard. So. An interesting choice, you know, it'll be luck based, but an interesting choice for accessory for her might just be Dimensional Jewel, right? Because when you're attacking with a skill, you get a chance to reduce the skill cooldown by one. I previously mentioned in the demonstration that she can't endlessly launch out single target strike skills because she only has cleanse and fireball. Well, as long as Dimension Jewel activates on one of those skills, she can keep launching single target strikes for a bit longer, right? If Cleanse activates it, then she can toss it out again, you know, then she can switch to Fireball, then toss out Cleanse again. If it activates on Fireball, she can keep tossing out these Fireballs. So Dimension Jewel may be an accessory that is well worth considering for PvE content. Alright, and with that said, the final part to cover will be the Enchants for Young Jessica. And as I said, because Young Jessica's talent of mobility buffing is a unique enchant, right? She can very well run the Breeze enchant. You know, that way she can potentially get plus two mobility, allowing her to have three or four mobility when moving around. So that would be a pretty solid combo in my opinion. If you don't think you need that mobility in general for her when she's in her goddess state, well, you can choose to bring, let's say, the other enchants would be like the other red enchants, right? You would choose either magic or clock. Right? Clock, because as I previously demonstrated, um, her AoE attacks would need clock effect to trigger if you want to keep tossing them out. Right? Once she's in her goddess state, unless you decide to deactivate her goddess state, then reactivate it. As for magic, well, magic simply increases skill damage, right? So her single target strike skills go up by 10%, and AoE attacks can also go up by 15 as a result. In general, I would say Breeze is probably the best enchant to settle for, right? And it offers the overall most flexibility in the sense that the gear can be easily moved to another character. Right? If you already have a Breeze Enchant set, you can easily move it to someone else. Of course, with that said, if you have a Clocks Enchant set, you can easily move it to someone else as well. You know? So, all three of those enchants are quite viable. Which one you choose is ultimately up to you, depending on how you like to use these characters. I personally favor Breeze, as I said, I think mobility is the key thing. Uh, but if she does have two mobility, keep in mind, two mobility plus 5 range gives her 7 attack range, right? Do you truly need 9 attack range? You probably don't. Yeah. So Breeze Enchant may not absolutely be required for her, in which case you can run Clocks as I said, or um, Magic as well. And that concludes this video. Thanks for watching everyone! I hope you found all this information useful. And on that note, 
Nacho out. <laughs>